Have you ever had one of those days where you open your phone and you've got unfinished notes, vague reminder lists, a calendar that's basically a graveyard of good intentions, and you still forgot to pick up your dry cleaning? Things fall through the cracks all the time, but today I'm showing you how to build a foolproof task management system that changed everything for me. Here's the truth. Your brain is terrible at remembering things at the right time and place. It'll remind you about a new pair of sneakers randomly during a meeting, not when you're actually walking past Dick's Sporting Goods. The solution is creating a system you 100% trust to collect all your tasks and ideas. Once you know nothing will slip through the cracks, your brain stops that endless nagging loop. So I use a system based on GTD, created by David Allen. I've pared it down to four key components, which is much more manageable for me at this point in my life. We have a collection point, and all, I mean all items come into the system through here. We have action items. There are things I'm waiting for from other people, and a holding spot for stuff I might want to do in the future, but isn't time sensitive. These are all tracked in Apple Reminders, and I use a calendar for time-specific commitments, so this is bare-bones stuff. Your collection point is where you capture ideas and tasks as they occur to you. And let me ask, how many times have you remembered something right after it would have been useful? That's why the barrier for adding something should be as low as possible. We want zero friction, and you need to be able to add items anytime, any place, under any conditions. Driving, walking, sitting at your desk, wherever and whenever. I use Apple Reminders, and the biggest reason I use Reminders is that I can use Siri voice control to add items while I'm on the go. Let's face it, I have white hair, I'm over 50, and if I don't capture something in the moment, poof, it's gone. If I'm walking around my neighborhood, it's awesome to be reminded to pick up my dry cleaning when I'm nearby and not have to make an extra trip. If I'm driving, I use CarPlay to add items, and if I'm walking down the street, I can add items with my AirPods. Feel free to use any app you want, but it must be easy to use at any time. Otherwise, you'll stop using it, you'll end up with multiple lists, and your system will break down. So in Apple Reminders, create a new list called Inbox. Make it bright red if you want so it jumps out at you, and remember, this is your lifeline. Now set it as your default list in settings. Anything you say to Siri, like remind me to buy dog food, will automatically go into your inbox. Don't worry about adding any extra detail, just get it out of your head and into the system. That's the only priority right now. When starting the system, take an hour or so to do a brain dump and write down everything that's not where it should be or not as it should be. Here's my inbox. There are a bunch of items in it right now. You know, we have car service appointment, follow up with my financial advisor regarding his email from April 11th, find out what I need to get done for real ID by May 7th. I'll need that in order to fly or use my passport. I also need to research bank accounts to find ones that don't charge for wire transfers, and I need to schedule an appointment with my podiatrist. Yep, getting old stinks. Literally, everything that pops into my head goes here, because if I try to remember it, I'll forget it. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you don't follow any other steps in this system, just implementing a single list will bring a huge benefit to your productivity. Now, let's talk about what we do next, processing all these items that we've gathered in the inbox. But before we go through them, we need to create a few more lists in the Reminders app. There are three more that we need. A next actions list, a someday maybe list, and a waiting for list. Once I have these created, we can start processing. I go through items one by one in the order they appear, and if I skip a day, it's like laundry. It piles up fast. That's why I try to do this each day. I have a good backlog for this demonstration, but typically it should only take a few minutes per day for me to go through it and get everything squared away. For each item, I first ask, is it actionable now? If not, I only have three options. Delete it, add it to my someday maybe list for low priority ideas, or add it to my calendar if it's date specific in the future. Those are the only choices I have if I can't take action right now on it. But if it is actionable, meaning I could do it now and it needs to be done at some point, then we just need to decide the next specific action for that item. Make sure to start every task with a verb. This is required. So some examples. Don't say plan vacation, change it to check flight prices to Hawaii. 
Not mom's birthday, that's too vague. Make it create a list of birthday gift ideas for mom. We need to be specific. Change fix sync to watch YouTube video on fixing leaky faucet. Now, move these actions to the next actions list. Important side note, this is when we should add any additional important details. Step one was focused on just getting items into the list. This step is when we take time to make sure everything has the appropriate information. In some cases, items in the inbox are actions we need someone else to do. So we delegate these to someone else and then move the item to the waiting for list. How you choose to delegate, whether it's email, text, phone call, it's up to you. But for each item in the waiting for list, start the task with waiting for, use the notes field to include any relevant details, and then set a due date for when you should follow up, and add the date you delegated it in the notes field as well. Examples include waiting for Shannon to update the account for deposits or waiting for the doctor to call back about an appointment. This list saves me from endlessly searching emails wondering if someone replied or when I asked for something to be done. Now I just check here. Next, we have the someday maybe list for ideas and projects you might want to do in the future. This keeps your active lists clean while ensuring good ideas don't get lost. You might add things like research train trip through the Canadian Rockies. Um, I'll also add possible YouTube video topics I want to research and links to articles I might want to read. I'll review this list on a weekly basis to see if anything should be made active and move to my next actions list or get scheduled on my calendar. When it comes to your calendar, remember it's sacred. It's only for things that must happen on a specific date. Don't put clean garage on Wednesday just because you think you might want to do it then. Your calendar should only contain time specific appointments such as meeting with a client at 2 p.m., day specific actions, file taxes by Tuesday, and day-specific information, such as flight departure time. Everything else goes into my action lists. If it doesn't absolutely have to happen on that date, it doesn't go on the calendar, period. That way, I can look at my day and instantly know what's non-negotiable. Okay, we're now up to the weekly review. This is where it all comes together. Your weekly review is how you keep the system trustworthy. Set a recurring weekly event in your calendar, and during this time, Process your inbox until it's empty. Review your action list and make sure everything critical is prioritized. Review the waiting for list. And then review the someday maybe list. And lastly, review the upcoming week in your calendar. Think of it as your weekly reset button. It's only 15 minutes that will save you hours. So now that you understand the core system, you're ready to get started. For most people, just implementing what we've covered today will create a dramatic improvement in how you manage tasks and reduce stress. Once you've used the system for a few weeks and it feels natural, you might want to take it to the next level. So in part two of this series, I'll show you more advanced features that will save you even more time. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.